Why did Maru switch to Protoss? Does Raynor really hate Maru? Where the heck is Harston? And do hamsters breathe twice or 200 times a minute? All of these questions will be answered in today's episode of StarCraft Today. StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. Starting off the news with Harstam, at this point one of the biggest StarCraft 2 content creators on YouTube who still does not understand anything about video quality or compression, sending this intro video in a whopping resolution of 800 by 400 which funnily enough is less than the StarCraft 2 unit portraits. So I guess I'll put him down there. Hello friends, sadly this week I will not be capable of making StarCraft today due to business obligations. I hope you all will be able to understand that as I'm tied up in some very important things. Kevin, where are you? Club time. Oh, uh, I will have to go. Hamster will take care of the episode this week. Thank you and uh, see you all next time. Bye bye. To continue the roast of Harstam, let's start the StarCraft action with Dreamhack Valencia, where surprisingly he made it out of the group stage in second place behind Clem, but immediately got shut down by his teammate Scarlet in the round of 24 playoffs. After an hour and 15 minutes of macro games, he took the Canadian Zerg to the final game 5 on the new map Inside and Out, where Scarlet took advantage of Harstam using pretty much the same build 5 times in a row and surprised him with an early roach attack. The Dutch Protoss barely held on long enough to get a Void Ray out, losing 21 probes already, but when the reinforcement links killed the natural expansion, he was forced to tap out of the match as well as the single elimination tournament. The very stacked group stage did not hold too many surprises, but in group G the Korean Terran Byun only advanced in third place behind Neep as well as Euthermal, who he lost both TVT matches to. Their second clash was actually interrupted by disconnects even though Dreamhack Valencia marked the return to offline tournaments again, apparently also shutting down the mainstream temporarily as well. Luckily it only affected one map and Euthermal showed off some fantastic as well as patient TVT control and great tank positioning in the late game, forcing Bian to attack into him and winning both matches 2-1. Neep, who advanced in first, continued his recent run of great performances, beating DRG in the round of 16 with some beautiful ground protoss play, making Blink Stalkers look incredibly strong and getting the close 3-2 victory. Sadly, he fell short in the very next game as Creator's PvP was just too powerful. Neep did not go down without resistance though as he bought us 5 exciting matches including an insane base trade scenario in game 3 which will be this episode's game of the week. It starts off a little bit inconspicuous with Creator opting for a 1 gate fast expand into Blink against Neep's Stargate opener. The Korean Protoss finds some damage early in the game when he snipes his opponent's first immortal with a Blink Stalker attack. After that both players run straight into a base trade scenario with both players being able to save a good amount of probes. But as Neep kills the last nexus of Creator, he builds some kind of panic nexus pretty much in the middle of the map, only allowing for long distance mining on the Korean side, while the American tries to take his opponent's fourth base location. With very similarly sized armies roaming the map and both players being out of production, it becomes a game of cat and mouse really fast, trying to catch any unit possible out on the map. But with Neep's way superior mining, Creator is forced into a fight in the middle of the map where the newest on-site gaming recruit can take the lead of the series temporarily. Even though it was not enough for Neep, in the end it was one heck of the game and I definitely recommend watching it. Another maybe unexpected performance came from Elaser. After he got last place in his group, losing to Neep and Bian, the Polish Zerg fought himself into the playoffs through the knockout bracket, knocking out Fighting Frog and Kalazu in the process. But when it came to the playoffs, he put the pedal to the metal and beat both Solar and Ragnarok 3-0, not dropping a single map combined. In the quarterfinals he had to face off yet another Korean Zerg in Dark, who turned everything around and blasted Elaza out of the tournament with a 3-0 himself. With an average game length of just 6 minutes and 41 seconds, Dark made quick work of his opponent and convincingly moved on into the semifinals. As Serral cancelled his Dreamhack Valencia appearance, a lot of European hope laid on the shoulders of Clem and Raynor. Both got first in their respective groups, but got stopped in the quarterfinals by Koreans as well. Clem started his series against Hero Great, going up 2-0, but Hero was not done yet. He beat the young French with an impressive reverse sweep, displaying his strong Protoss vs Terran play. 
Reyna, on the other hand, was able to beat Bunny 3 to 1 in the round of 16, but was not able to repeat his ZVT success against Maru. In a two and a half hour series, the Korean showed his supreme late game masterclass, beating a quite frustrated Reyna with some great strategic Ghost Battle Cruiser mech play. That resulted in a full Korean semi-finals in which Meru only dropped a single map against Creator and Dark taken out Hero 3-2, leading into a stacked final best of 7 between Dark and Maru. The series started off with two fairly quick map wins for the Zerg as Maru died twice to overwhelming Ling Bane attacks around the 9 minute mark. The third match opened up with four Zerglings getting into the Terran's main base, costing him a lot of mining time as well as some units. Dark followed it up with a two base Spire killing 15 SCVs immediately with just six Mutalisks. But Maru still held on and even set up a big push around seven minutes into the game, nearly killing the fourth base but ultimately getting pushed back. Shortly after Dark tried to roll over Maru with a massive baneling force, but a decent upgrade advantage kicking in for the Terran allowed Maru to push back the attack and across the map, winning his first map of the series after dealing with a Ling Rambais. In game 4 we saw a Hellion Battlecruiser opener that got shut down immediately by a massive Queen force. He then went for a mech composition which Dark answered with some swarm host Nidus play, repeatedly jumping on the Terran's fourth base and shutting it down. Despite the constant pressure of locusts terrorizing his main and SCVs, Maru manages to push deep onto creep, take out a bunch of units and even deny one of Dark's bases. But it was not enough to win the game, so it turned into a 26 minute siege as Dark held Maru on a limited number of bases and slowly starved him out for a 3 to 1 lead in the finals. But you should never write off Maru. With some strong marine tank pushes and some immaculate micro, he fights himself back into the series and evening it up 3 to 3, while Dark seems extremely frustrated, throwing his hands up in the air at the end of game 6. So it all boils down to the final clash on Stargazers, with Maru opting for a proxy Turex push with bunkers, killing the uncontested natural while Dark expands to the back of his main. But as all of the Terran's follow-up harass get shuts down, the Korean Zerg can drone up and establish a small economic lead. It turns into a war of multitasking, with multiple groups of medivacs constantly roaming the map and being defended by Ling Bane Roach Ravenger, until Dark pulls the trigger and attacks Maru while simultaneously dropping a huge amount of Zerglings into the Terran's main base. After that, it only takes Dark one more push of Ling Bane Ultra combined with another Ling drop into the main to absolutely decimate the ego of his opponent and take Game 7, winning the DreamHack StarCraft 2 Masters 2022 Valencia. StarCraft action continued just three days after the DreamHack Valencia finals when the first qualifiers for the Team Liquid Star League 9 started over in Korea. Two out of the three qualifiers are played already with four players each qualifying for the main event of TSL9. We did not have too many surprises so far, but some people might have expected Creator to beat Gumiho, as he is rated and therefore seeded higher than the Terran player. But after Gumiho took the 2-1 lead in the series, Creator opens up the fifth game with a proxy robo, going for an adept stalker immortal drop and killing 8 SCVs. But this just was not good enough, as the following blink stalker pressure just did not work out for the Protoss and Gumiho simply walks across the map, winning the series and being the first one to qualify for TSL 9. In the second qualifying match, Zaun was not able to hold up against Sola, who only dropped a single map against the Protoss player, winning the match 3-1 with a nice queen push on Data C. Hero then made relatively quick work of Ryang as he qualified with a 3-0 dub over the Terran, especially in Game 3 in which an early proxy gate adept pressure killed way too many SCVs and straight up ended the match. The last qualifying match of the first day was also a 3-0 sweep, this time in favor of Ragnarok. Nightmare tried to hold his ground but was pretty much constantly down in supply and just not strong enough in the end. The second qualifier had a big surprise ready for us though. First Creator beat Prince 3-1 getting his TSL 9 spot secured, but Prince did catch Creator off guard and was able to build 4 proxy buildings in Creator's pocket expansion on Moondance, giving him the quick and only map win of the series. 
After that, Ryang fell short of qualification a second time in just two days as Classic beat the Korean Terran pretty convincingly with 3 to 1, showing some impressive PVT. And this might have been what inspired Maru on this day. After he beat the Korean Protoss Arai 2-0, he decided to off-race as Protoss himself against Percival. And it was a wild series. It starts off in game 1 with a proxy factory that gets flown into Maru's main base to build Widow Mines, but Percival slightly flies it into vision range temporarily, so it gets spotted. Maru with a great response, immediately denying the 3 marine push at the same time and winning the game from there, going up 1-0. In the second game, Percival opens up with a proxy rex and a bunker at the Protoss Natural, but Maro keeps his calm and does not take any severe damage. That cannot be said about the following two base tank all in, even pulling all the SCVs that barely killed the robotics facility before the second Colossus pops out, and Percival can take the map from there. In the third game on Inside and Out, he then goes for one base 3 rex stim all in, but as it is scouted, he pulls the trigger before the stim research is finished, and battery overcharge buys enough time for Maru to get an immortal out and defend. The fourth game once again opens up with Terran aggression. Percival attacks with two cyclones and a few marines and does deal a little bit of probe damage, but it quite frankly is nowhere close to enough. Maru fights back the aggression and comes out on top economically. Percival tries to get back into the game with a tank push once again, pulling the SCVs, but the off-race Protoss is able to hold onto his natural, eventually cleaning up the push, going across the map himself and winning the game. And so, Maru qualifies for TSL 9 with his off-race Protoss. Last but not least, Zaun as well took a second shot at qualifying after falling short to Solar on day 1 and this time it worked out. Nightmare could not hold his ground against some aggressive Blink Stalker play and so Zaun takes the series with a clean 3-0. This means we already have 8 participants of TSL9 in Gumiho, Solar, Hero, Ragnarok, Creator, Classic, Maru and Zaun. The action continues today with the first European qualifier. As always, we of course had three ESL Open Cups again, starting over in Korea, where Su had an impressive run into the finals, not dropping a single map against Firefly, Classic and Percival. There he had to face off against Zaun, who just was slightly too strong. The Korean Protoss took the series 3-2 in a pretty long and macro-oriented series, ending in an amazing engagement, including force field galore and insane disruptor shots. Over in Europe, we saw Hero Marine racing through a slightly thinned out bracket due to Dreamhack Valencia, not dropping a single map up until the finals as well against Dobro, Spatz, Art and Gishi. The other finalist was Skillis, who was able to beat Firefly, Goblin and Gung Fu Banda to get there. Hero Marine on the other hand was just too strong. Skillis tried to equalize the series with a cheeky proxy Stargate in the Terran's pocket expansion, which ultimately did not work out. The German takes the series 3-1 and gets yet another ESL Open Cup win. After losing in Europe, Skillis tried a second time this week in North America, once again getting into the finals. Here his opponent would be Max Pex, who beat Gumiho, the freshly qualified TSL9 participant, in the semi-finals. But Skillis had an even worse time in this PvP. Max Pex steamrolled him, including a just 3 minute long game on Tropical Sacrifice thanks to a shield battery rush. 3-0 in favor of the young Dane, securing him his 23rd ESL Open Cup win already. Dreamhack Valencia provided a variety of amazing clips. We had insane engagements like this 360 degree surround by Maru against Creator. Devastating disruptor shots. Cameraman getting extremely close to the audience. Widow Mines obliterating a whole Terran army as well as real emotions and celebrations. But I think the clip of the week should be this beautiful banter between Raynor and Maru. Enjoy. Uh, Maru, Maru is obviously really good. You know, he's uh, probably the best Terran uh, in the world. He's very good at camping. You know, he gets to you after a while. Yeah, gets, uh, gets, hits the right nerve, you know, when he doesn't move for 40 minutes. It's not really fun. <laughs> 후반 I think you were able to really see and feel the frustration of Zergs playing against Maru this Dreamhack Valencia. This is going to be it for today's episode of StarCraft today, but not before we answer the question, do hamsters breathe twice or 200 times a minute? 
Although not true hibernators, in the wild hamsters will stay in their burrows and block up the exits with soil. They sleep in grass-lined nests and wake up once a week to eat some of the food they have stashed over autumn. In case of the golden hamster, while quote-unquote hibernating, their pulse drops from the normal 400 beats per minute to only 4 per minute. They only take a breath twice every minute. But this also means that in the summer, the pulse of a golden hamster is faster than your APM. That is going to be it for today. Thanks a lot for watching this quite unusual episode of StarCraft today. If you still enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe and tweet at Harstam. Just stay in Spain, we don't need you anymore. Otherwise, he will be back on schedule next week. Thanks so much for watching and bye bye.